Good evening, and welcome to the September 14th meeting of the Glendale Commission on the Status of Women. May we have roll call, Ms. Baboumian? Commissioner Katefian? Commissioner Lamel? Present. Commissioner Manasarian? Here. Uh, Commissioner Malakian? Here. Commissioner Maracat? Here. Commissioner Pillsbury? Here. Commissioner Sobey? Here. Commissioner Walker? Chair Devine? Here. Uh, Next item. Chair Devine, I'd like to note that um, Commissioner Katefian's absence is excused this evening. Thank you. Next item. At 1A, we have a report regarding the posting of the agenda. The agenda for the September 14, 2009 meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside of City Hall on or before September 11, 2009. Next item. At 2A, we have Dr. Iona Bina from Glendale Adventist Medical Center, and she's going to be presenting about fatty liver disease and obesity. Uh, Dr. Bina was nominated by her peers in 2008 and 2009 as one of the top doctors in the San Gabriel Valley, and she is a diplomat of the American Boards of Gastroenterology and Internal Medicine. She was, a, she was fellowship trained at Norwalk Hospital in Connecticut and completed advanced studies in endocrinology, metabolism, and nutrition. And I present Dr. Bina. Good evening, Chair Devine, Commissioners, and staff. Uh, my name is Dr. Ioana Bina, and I will uh, present today um, um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, the, um, my goal is to increase awareness about <coughs> this rapidly emerging health concern, which is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It is an obesity-related um, chronic liver injury that is um, dramatically rising. Um, it is the new liver disease of our century, and I will briefly go through what is it, why we care about it, and what we can do about it. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease um, is actually a buildup of excessive fat in uh, liver cells of people who drink little or no alcohol. Um, there, are, um, a, there is a spectrum that ranges from steatosis, which is fat deposition in the liver cells. Um, the cells are not damaged, and this is generally benign. The next step is the steatohepatitis, or NASH, uh, where the fat triggers uh, inflammation in the liver cells, and uh, that in turn uh, triggers cell death and repair mechanism that start um, fibrosis. And um, that form of... Um, NASH um, actually has an increased risk of uh, progression to cirrhosis. The cirrhosis is the advanced uh, scarring of the liver, and um, it can be lethal. There is an increased risk of liver-related death due to uh, liver failure, uh, decompensation, or um, liver cancer. There's a, in this slide, we can uh, observe a Biopsies from a normal liver on the left and a fatty liver on the right. In uh, the normal liver, there's less than 5% fat. In the fatty liver, this uh, amount can reach up to 40%. Follow-up of uh, patients with um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease shows that in general, this is a uh, benign disease. Um, over 10 years, about 3% of uh, patients will get cirrhosis. <coughs> Um, in contrast, the subtype of uh, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis and fibrosis has a much more rapid progression. In five to ten years, approximately 30 percent of uh, patients will get cirrhosis. Once um, they have cirrhosis, there's a risk of liver cancer of one to two percent per year, and the above-mentioned uh, decompensation and uh, liver-related uh, death. The mechanism of the progression uh, from benign fat accumulation to non-alcoholic um, fatty uh, liver disease and uh, uh, non-alcoholic um, uh, steatohepatitis and uh, cirrhosis is not well understood um, at present, and um, there is significant research ongoing to try to elucidate this fact. Um, this picture is... Um, actually very evocative of what we need to worry about. So um, the patients that have steatohepatitis and uh, signs of cirrhosis need to be um, identified and followed carefully. Risks for um, non-alcoholic fat or liver disease um, are obesity, and in particular the abdominal obesity. 
Um, there are fat-derived factors that promote inflammation um, and uh, inflammatory response triggers the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, insulin resistance and diabetes, and dyslipidemia, in particular hypertriglyceridemia. Um, there's also ethnicity disparities. Um, Hispanics have um, approximately 45% um, risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease compared with Caucasians, approximately 33%, and African American, approximately 24%. And it is thought that part of this is due to um, high uh, incidence of uh, metabolic syndrome, which is a constellation of diabetes, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, and obesity in Hispanic population. The risk factors for cirrhosis um, are age over 45 to 50, and <coughs> obesity and diabetes. Uh, approximately 60% of patients that are over 50 and have either obesity or diabetes uh, will have advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis on, uh, or cirrhosis on liver biopsy. If we uh, want to identify these patients, it's, uh, clinically it's um, relatively difficult because the majority of cases are asymptomatic. Um, on physical examination, um, an enlarged liver can be palpated sometimes. Um, there are nonspecific symptoms like fatigue, uh, right upper abdominal discomfort, anorexia, nausea, or vomiting. And um, on uh, laboratory examination, abnormal liver enzymes and uh, on ultrasound or CAT scan or MRI, we can detect the uh, fatty liver if the content or fat in the liver is um, significant enough. Um, all these tests are not very good at detecting the uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Why do we care? We care because um, this is an extremely common and largely unappreciated um, entity that's um, associated with the obesity epidemic. It's the most common liver abnormality in the United States and at present. And um, as we saw earlier, it can be deadly, leading to cirrhosis and liver cancer. It is um, the number three cause of liver transplant at uh, present, and it's estimated that you will be soon become uh, number one cause. Um, it's, it's, it's a huge burden. It is reversible up to a point if the causes are eliminated. And this um, shows the obesity trends among um, United um, States adults. Um, if we look over 10 years, in uh, 1990, there was um, less than 15% of the population was obese in the entire United States. In uh, 1999, 20 to 24% of the population is obese in 18 states. In uh, 2008, um, more than 30% of population is obese in six states, and more than 25% of population is obese in 32 states. So this is going to become a huge burden for the liver specialists and for doctors in general. The patients need to be aware and take um, measures to prevent uh, progression to um, NASH. So. Uh, why we care? Because two-thirds of US, U.S. population is overweight or obese at present, and uh, 15 to 20 percent of children are obese. Um, the burden of uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease at present is estimated to be 47.7 million of adults and 7.5 million of kids. And uh, luckily, as we saw, um, majority have the steatosis, which is just the fatty uh, deposits in the liver with no injury, but some of these will progress to more ominous um, results. So um, what can we do about it? There are numerous trials uh, at the moment that are um, trying to uh, find specific drug treatments for non-alcoholic uh, liver disease, but none is uh, available at present. And the mainstay of uh, the treatment is actually lifestyle modification, which is the most important thing. Prevention of childhood obesity, um, healthy eating habits and exercise should be common sense measures that should be applied. Um, also treating the associated diseases. So um, the weight loss should be done safely, approximately one to two pounds a week. Uh, more rapid weight loss or starvation actually worsens the fatty liver, so it's not recommended. The triglycerides should be lowered through diet, and if not enough, medication should be added. 
The alcohol should be avoided, especially in patients with fibrosis and cirrhosis. The patients that have just um, steatosis could have modest amounts of alcohol, maybe one drink occasionally for women and uh, up to two drinks for men are recommended. The uh, diabetes, if is present, should be uh, treated. Um, the physical activity should be increased and aerobic and uh, um, activity should be um, actually uh, the most predominant one. And regular checkups from a doctor who specializes in liver disease, if any of the above risk factors are present, um, should be uh, performed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bina. Are there any comments or questions from my fellow commissioners? Mr. <coughs> Manasarian? Um, what is this lipidemia? This lipidemia is um, high cholesterol and high triglycerides. Oh, okay. And the fatty liver actually is worsened by the high triglycerides and low good cholesterol. Oh, I see. And you also mentioned that 47.7 million adults are actually at risk, or they already have? They the have it. They have the They disease. have it. Um, the spectrum of disease is majority benign, just the fat deposits in the liver with no injury of cells. Some people have no, just you, uh, this is discovered incidentally, um, and that's the majority of people. But there are a subgroup, the ones that get inflammation and liver um, cell injury, uh, that will progress to cirrhosis. And, um, which is a dangerous. Which is the one that, th this, this is the group that we need to watch and find and treat. Thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Pillsbury? What percentage of uh, people who are obese are, do you expect will get this disease? There are some studies uh, where if patients that are morbidly obese, up to 90% will have some form of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And what about just the overweight? The category? overweight will be less. <laughs> will be less. But um, up to 30% of people that go for bariatric surgery um, can be, um, when they, they have the surgery and they evaluate the liver, they get liver biopsies, they will have significant signs of um, liver injury from obesity. So depending on what trial you look, um, there are different numbers, but it's very significant. And with this um, obesity rising, we're going to see more and more and more. Any other comments, commissioners? Um, I just want to say uh, a couple of things. First of all, I know that the reason you wanted to come before the commission mm -hmm. uh, to do this presentation was because of your concern for obesity in children. Correct. And uh, the only way to really help these kids is to do exactly what you're saying, to watch their diet and exercise. And the second thing, um, we have been doing this focus on health now for seven or eight months, and I'm, I don't remember. Women's it, health. Women's health. And every, with every disease that we've discussed, exercise and proper eating habits have been at the crux of every every single disease. So I think if our, our population, our women, our mothers, our fathers can um, maybe teach the children, make set good examples about eating habits and exercise habits, that um, we can help to prevent some of this obesity, uh, perhaps in the schools if they gear some of their programs towards this um, problem. Uh, there could be um, less obesity and then, of course, less repercussions from fatty liver disease. The scary fact is that it's estimated that in each high school there's two to three kids that actually have cirrhosis already and they don't know. At, high, at the high school level? Yes, because they are obese since childhood and the 10 years that um, need to be there for progression have been met. So there are, there are already transplants in, in kids for um, cirrhosis due to uh, fatty liver. Mm -hmm. You know, perhaps the, um, the school board um, or the uh, superintendents of curriculum could look at this and, and build into the curriculum at our schools um, 
a program for obese children. I remember when I'm a former PE teacher and we did aerobics and weightlifting and, and all of the, the um, aerobic programs that kids need running and walking. But one of the things that we always wanted to do, the women wanted to do, was to have a special class uh, for the obese girls and boys and teach them about eating hab nutrition and exercise and uh, no one would know what we couldn't get anybody to buy into that and uh, I think now it's time that maybe schools should be looking at this and uh, maybe it would serve you well to uh, to speak to some of our our board members dr. Bina be did we have that. another comment commissioner yeah. yes um, I wanted to just go over the symptoms again I think it's very important for uh, everyone to hear that right. and also since there is no specific medi uh, medication right. how can they slowly reverse it because while you can change your habits and start to exercise it takes a while the weight for loss that is the mainstay yes. of um, of uh, treatment at this point, the weight loss. Weight and, loss. Um, weight loss, right. If they have diabetes or high lipids, they need to be treated. Uh, but so there's talk about no, the symptoms. There, the symptoms, majority of, uh, of uh, individuals are asymptomatic. They would not know they have this problem. And any, any other symptoms they will have, they can be attributed to many other problems, diseases. Um, as I said, poor appetite, nausea, vomiting, discomfort in the upper abdomen or right upper quadrant. It's not really severe. It's just a dull ache at times, um, you know, fatigue things as such. So it's, it's difficult to diagnose it just by, by physical. Um, so you really have to go by the, uh, the weight and the non-activity? The physical examination, person. the risk factors, and um, actually elimination of any other sources or causes of liver disease. Um, in the end, um, the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a diagnosis of exclusion. But we know who is at risk and um, we uh, we need to identify these individuals and educate them and uh, follow them closely. Exactly, educate and uh, and uh, uh, diagnose, huh? Right. Very good. Any other comments? Thank you, Dr. Bina. I Thank you very uh, much. I really appreciate you coming this evening. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Very informative. Bye. -bye. Next item. Chair Devine, Commission members, thank you for inviting Pat Zider and me to talk about One Book, One Glendale, our citywide reading event. This is our third year, and last year we had more than 3,800 people participate, and we're expecting a, an even bigger banner year this year. The re citywide reading event is a program that encourages the people of Glendale to read the same book at the same time, attend book groups that meet throughout the city to talk about the book. We have programs related to the themes of the book, and then our author comes to Glendale. And we have two components. We have a book for adults, and we have a book for children. Uh, the One Book program started in 1998 at the Seattle Public Library and it's spread all over the United States and it's not just cities or counties or states that have one book programs now you see them showing up on school campuses and particularly on college campuses we are absolutely thrilled that this year our adult book is Shanghai Girls by Lisa C. and Chair Devine and Pat and I were discussing the, this book and this author before. Some of you may know Lisa C. She's a local author. She writes a lot about women. She wrote Snowflower and the Secret Fan about foot binding and another of her well-known books is on Gold Mountain and that's an autobiography of her family, her Chinese-American family. And um, one of the things about choosing a book for the entire city of Glendale, you know, there's no art and there's no science to it. Um, we, Pat and I spent a lot of time thinking what will work. And we chose this before it was published, so we went out on a limb. And I'm happy to report from the New York Times to People Magazine, 
this book has been chosen one of the best books of summer to, to read, and it's been on all the bestseller lists, and it continues to be about six, four months after it came out. It's the story of two sisters, Pearl and May. And Pearl and May are very privileged young women in Shanghai. And through some misfortunes, they have to leave China and they immigrate to to the United States and they come to Angel Island and a lot of us don't know about Angel Island I have to say I didn't know a tremendous amount it's like an Ellis Island but also a bit of a prison and the sisters are there for a while and they eventually in, in San Francisco mm -hmm. Bay thank you Pat I should say it's in my head but I'm not saying it and then they come to live in Chinatown the book takes place from 1937 to 1957. Lisa C. is known for her great historical research. So it is a fiction story, So, but it also it, it mirrors the history of China and Chinatown in Los Angeles from 1937 to 1957. Lisa C. is going to be in Glendale on Wednesday, October 28th. And we at 7 p.m. at the Glendale Central Library, and we hope everyone will come. But everyone has a reader's guide. We think it turned out very well. It just came back from the publisher. And on the back page, there are our other programs. So some people may not be able to come and, and see Lisa C. at the library, but we're having a film festival about Chinese films. We are presenting two other authors who have written on, on China. And we have book groups that will meet throughout Glendale. So you can come to a library to a book group. You can come to Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf at the Americana. You can come to the patio at Whole Foods and join us in conversation. You know, we celebrate reading. We talk about the importance of literacy. We discuss the power of the book by having one book, one Glendale. But at the same time, we're bringing our very diverse community together by having a conversation about one thing, a book. So we hope everyone will be Shanghai Girls and come to our programs. And Pat is going to tell us about the children's book. OK, so we haven't forgotten our younger readers. We um, have an addition. Uh, uh, program that's going on at the same time, which is One Book, One Glendale for Younger Readers, and it's for ages fourth grade and up. And our book that we have chosen for um, that program is Poison Ivy by Amy Goldman Koss, and she is a Glendale author. She's written um, several other books for teens. And this is a story about bullying, which is a pretty timely topic. And um, in the, in the book, a young girl, middle school girl, I believe, is um, bullied by three of her very popular classmates. And when their teach, government teacher finds out, she decides to have a mock trial for the, the um, girls who are accused of bullying. And um, they do this, but the results are uh, completely unexpected. So it's sort of a little bit of a surprise ending. Um, parents are also encouraged to participate with their kids. Um, as I said, it's for fourth grade and up, and Amy Goldman Koss will be appearing at the library on Thursday, November 19th at 7 p.m. at the Central Library in the auditorium to um, talk with kids, do a presentation, and answer questions. And if you check the um, library website, glendalepubliclibrary.org, uh, you can link to other children's programs that are coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioners, any comments? Commissioner Manasarian? So if um, our audience, they want to participate, do, do, do they go to the website and register, or how is that done? No registration required. Just come. Our website lists the book and all the programs. People may come to the library and check out the book. We have quite a few copies. The book continues to yeah. be popular. People can place a hold on the book and, and get it, and then just Come and talk about the book. Come to our programs. So there's no signing up. Fantastic. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? I've adopted the book for my two uh, Glendale Community College English 101 classes. So it's good to know. They're, the students are buying the book, but it's good to know that there are also available um, in the library. And also the campus has adopted the book as well. So Lisa C. will be visiting 
GCC as well. So we look forward to that. She will be at GCC on Thursday, October 29th at noon. And, and thank you, Commissioner Sobey, because last year the college joined the city in, in presenting one book, one Glendale. And so it's wonderful because we've had so many college students read the book on campus and come to our library programs. So it's a terrific component. I, I support that every single year it's been right. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Well, I'll, I'll end by saying that I have read the book. And uh, um, also, I have to give kudos to the what to you for picking the book before selecting it before it was even published and to the wide uh, YWCA for having Lisa as their guest speaker I think it was two years ago at your at their luncheon and she was very interesting and so when I saw the book I thought oh my gosh I've seen this this author and uh, she's fabulous so I read the book it is a fun a quick read it's easy it's a page turner um, but it's fun to read because it takes place in Los Angeles and so when Chinatown was not even Chinatown, it was just kind of beginning. And so it's a kind of a good history book uh, for Los Angeles. And also it's great to see the power of women. Uh, even, uh, you know, during the war and uh, the Chinese women were here, and yet they were, they were courageous enough to, uh, to get involved in... Um, and trying to help their fellow countrymen back in China. So it's about the power of women, and it's also about the bond between sisters. And, and I think that's something that's beautiful to read about. So uh, I recommend the book as well, and uh, thank you for coming. And I, you probably have a full house for her uh, lecture at the library, won't you? We hope so. I'm I, sure we're, we're counting on it. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item. At three, we have oral comments. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Time is limited to an amount to be set by the chair. The commission may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or discussion. Staff may refer the matter to the proper department for investigation and report. Okay, we have quite a few cards, so I'll limit your time to three to five minutes, if possible. Uh, first, uh, we have Ramella Markarian. And um, she's the Director of Physician Development at Glendale Adventist uh, Medical Center. Welcome, Ramella. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners, Chair Devine. Um, I'm here to make two announcements. Uh, the first one is an event, a very interesting <coughs> fashion show, organized by Glendale Adventist Medical Center's foundation, Healthcare Foundation. Um, it is on October 8th of this year uh, from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Glendale Gallery as Nordstrom's. It's a private shopping event featuring fashion presentations and exclusive purchase opportunities from Nordstrom's. And of course, the proceeds will benefit Glendale Adventist Medical Centers, Cancer Services, and Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. So um, the tickets are $75. Um, it is um, limited, of course, the space is limited. Nordstrom will be closed from 7 to 10. It's going to be a very fun event, um, $75 per ticket. Um, to secure your ticket, you can call 818-409-8055 or visit glendaladministmedicalcenter.com. And um, that's our first event, October 8, Thursday, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. The second event is um, a women's uh, health conference, ninth annual women's health conference organized by Senator Carol Lou's office. Um, the, the theme is knowledge is power. Um, it's focusing on women and um, their health and health issues. Um, it's an exposition and health conference on October 30th. Uh, starts at 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, so you can go online and register for uh, for different workshops. There are about 17 workshops. We have physicians who will be speaking about different topics such as women and uh, heart disease, uh, um, breast cancer, how to lose weight, anti-aging, Alzheimer's, and many more, so uh, surviving stroke. So it's a very interesting um, workshop. It is free, so we want to make sure that it's, um, you know, it's <coughs> women in our community know about this and go online and register. Again, space is limited. For registration, you can go on www.clwomenhealth.org. C 
clwomenhealth.org. Um, again, it's on October 30th, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Light refreshments will be provided, and uh, we encourage everyone to attend. Uh, Senator Carol Lou will be there. I'm chairing the media committee. We'll have media and press. Um, it's going to be a very interesting, educational, free, fun event. Thank you so much. I hope to see all Thank of you. you. I already have my tickets for the fashion show, so that I missed it last year, and I, I, you know, I <laughs> was really a upset. But this is going to be great. Much, so much, uh, it, it'll much be a better. lot of fun. So a lot of fun. Get a, a, a big uh, turnout for that one, and the Carol Lou's breakfast. Um, her workshops we're going to be talking about later too. So I hope that a lot of the commissioners will be there as well. So great. thank you, great, thank you, thank great you. events yes. coming up. Do you have sure. a flyer for the fashion? Yes, show? I do. And I can also email it to you, but I'll leave this. And I'm also going to leave a card for the fashion show. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Markarian. Okay. Lori Lieberman. And Lori is here because this is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. Good evening, Chair Devine, Commissioners, and staff. My name is Lori Lieberman, and I'm here to represent the Ovarian Cancer Coalition of Greater California. We're located in Studio City, California. We raise money for research and education for ovarian cancer. The money we raise stays in California. We give grants to UCLA and USC so they can working on new developments on blood tests to detect ovarian cancer. Currently the one test that is out there is a CA125 test and I just recently learned of another test called the OVA1 test that will detect what type of surgery shall be used. I just got the email the other day so I can't disclose, I can't get into it anymore. I just know that it's a new blood test. Um, we also give grants to a nonprofit hospital called the Valley Community Hospital in North Hollywood so um, people with low income could get kind of gynecological care. As you know that um, September is ovarian cancer awareness and thank you for wearing teal and as you can see I went all out with my hair because <laughs> I really wanted to promote the teal for ovarian cancer. Yesterday was our 11th annual walk run for ovarian cancer. It was a huge success. There was around 1,500 people in attendance. The founder, Gail McKenna, couldn't be here tonight as she, along with other volunteers, are working diligently on the results. I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a former employee of the city. I worked in the police department as a record supervisor. I am a three-year survivor of ovarian cancer, and this is the reason how I became involved in the coalition. My goal now is to educate women and to know the signs and symptoms because sometimes you attribute to something else and just never know. The signs and symptoms are abdominal pressure, bloating or discomfort, nausea, indigestion or gas, urinary frequency, constipation or diarrhea, abnormal bleeding, unusual fatigue, unexplained weight loss or gain, shortness of breath. If you have any of these symptoms, please see your health care professional. My goal now is to educate women and women on the signs because, like I said, I, I ignored some of them. And thankfully, I had excellent care, and I was able to get through this. And now I went from record supervisor to ovarian cancer advocate. And on behalf of the Ovarian Cancer Coalition, I would like to present you with some gifts, some fun things, and educational, and some stickers to wear. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, congratulations on your three years. That's Thank absolutely you. fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes, and uh, I applaud you for um, going out there and trying to educate women. A lot of women and cancer patients kind of want to keep it to themselves and not share, but uh, it uh, takes a lot of courage to go out and, and do what you're doing. So thank you so much, and uh, it was our pleasure to wear teal just thank for you. Thank you so much. Just for you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any comments or questions for Ms. Lieberman? 
No, I may I? Yes, Commissioner Mosseri. Ms. Lieberman, um, I think two years ago at Real A for Life. Right. She was also yes. an advocate then, and, and I congratulate Thanks, you for, for what you're doing, and I'm, doing I'm very it. happy to see you today. Thank yeah, you so welcome. much. Thank you. If I could say Another something. Another Masobi? I know the key is early detection. Early that's detection. Why that's so key. My mother died of ovarian oh, cancer. I'm sorry. So um, I know the seriousness of this disease that goes um, undetected possibly for years because the symptoms are so um, uh, subtle or the opposites, like you, like you say, constipation or diarrhea. Right. So it's a very, very tricky uh, and, and well, insidious it sure disease. Is. That's why you have to keep on it and mm -hmm. just don't ignore it. No. Don't, that, that is don't why they think call that it could yeah. be something else. Mm -hmm. right. Right. That's why they call it the silent killer, right? Because killer. you just don't, don't know you've got it. Okay. I had Commissioner Manasseri? I had another question. <laughs> Sorry. If uh, we go to our doctors, could we ask for the test to be yes, done? Yes, you have to actually oh. demand the demand test, the, the CA-125 test. It is a false negative test, but right now that's the only test you could go by. But you really need to tell your doctor, I want it, and if they don't want to get it, you tell them, I'll pay the $100, I want this test. It's your right, to, and they have to, to give have it to, to you. To ask for it, mm -hmm. okay. Also, pel pelvic ultrasounds pelvic are very ultrasounds. key as well, too. And that's completely um, not at all invasive and very painless. You're right. And Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And you talked about, is it called the OVA-1? OVA-1. Yeah, that was and that's, the one. That's very, it's brand new. The FDA just approved it. Right. And, and um, from what I, I have a report on it, Ms. Baboumian was... Uh, uh, comprehensive enough to and on top of it to send all of the commissioners a copy of this this uh, um, news release but um, what what it does is if they find a mass a cancerous mass and you can correct me if I'm wrong this is what I how I interpret it, uh, they re refer you to a gynecological oncologist instead of just the gynecologist doing the surgery Correct. They, th this allows you to refer to a gynecological oncologist, which is a little right. bit more and specific. And it'll determine on which person will do the surgery. Yes, yeah. And it's a simple, it is a blood test because mm -hmm. there are certain proteins that react differently, change if you have ovarian cancer. Correct. And that's how it's detected. So it's so a really, it's a wonderful step, isn't it? it in sure the right is. direction. So that's what we're yeah. working on. So that's yes. like brand new and. That's that's I what just, research is all about, and that's why we give, isn't it? Okay. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Lori. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good luck. <laughs> and our next speaker is Carol Ann Burton, uh, who is here from our YWCA to tell us about the candlelight vigil. Um, I want to reiterate, as a retired OBGYN, uh, on the issue of ovarian cancer. One of the most crucial things that a woman can do is get her annual exam because um, that's going to be the simplest way to avoid, Correct. you know, so get in and get checked. And then also um, a pap test pap does pap. not detect. Mm -hmm. No, a pap test it's is for cervical cancer, right. but the pap test brings you into the doctor. <laughs> so. Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, I'm here to announce uh, next month is uh, Domestic Violence and Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, both of those issues are the mission-driven programs of the YWCA. Um, we are holding our annual Candlelight Vigil on Friday, October 16th. We will be at the YWCA, and we're going to start uh, gathering people around 5. We're going to have a program uh, starting around 5.30, uh, talking about the issues of the violence. And a lot of the original theme of the candlelight vigil was commemoration of those who have had a violent history or, unfortunately, people who have actually succumbed to the issues of violence which we hope never to lose anybody due to domestic violence, but it's a commemoration uh, through the candlelight vigil. At the end of the program, we'll then have our traditional candle lighting uh, ceremony. So I would like to invite all of you and all of the audience listening to come down. To, uh, it 
our event is part of the Domestic Violence Commemoration Month. And uh, please come. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, commissioners, any comments for now? This is annually a, a, um, an event that the Commission takes part in and partners with the YW on, and uh, it's uh, a wonderful event and raises awareness of uh, domestic violence. And often the panels are absolutely fantastic to hear, and I'm sure that this year will be no, no different. So um, thank you, Dr. Burton, and uh, hopefully we can all attend. October 16th. October 16th. Thank you. Thank you. And it's at the Y. Yes, it is at the Y. It's at the Y. At 735 East Lexington, across the street from Whole Foods. In the green room. In the Regency Ballroom. Regency Ballroom. Okay. And what time? One what more time? time? Five? Five to seven. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Burton. Uh, and um, while I'm while she's walking away, um, let's make note that Commissioner Walker did uh, is present. Okay, uh, next speaker will be Lisa Babari, and she's here for the YWCA as well dedication ceremony in the gym, the new gym. Okay. Good evening, commissioners and Chair Devine. I'm here on behalf of the YWCA to invite you and our viewers to say that you are cordially invited to join the Board of Directors of the Glendale YWCA in celebration of the completion and the renovation of our gymnasium at the YWCA. As a major supporter of the YWCA and so many of our community members that have helped us to continue and thrive in our community, helping women and children, the Glendale community, we thank you. And the gym renovation includes the new backboards for the basketball hoops, a new electronic scoreboard and lighting. And as a token of our appreciation, we're uh, inviting you all to an evening of refreshment and uh, just getting together to, just to say thank you. And that day is going to be September 23rd this coming uh, Wednesday, a week from now, and it will be at the Regency Room from 5 to 7. Refreshments will be there, and we will give you a tour of the gymnasium and also the swimming pool that is all renovated. So we hope uh, that you can join us, and we also invite the community to come over. As long as we don't have to play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> no, good, not at all. <laughs> Any comments? Sounds Any comments? Yeah. Uh, congratulations Thank on you. the renovation. Thank That's you. This fabulous. is a great deal for the YWCA. Absolutely, yes. Any other commissioner comments? Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. May I take a moment and invite you to something else, actually. It is for our community. As I was listening to Dr. Bina, I would also like to say that I own a healing center, Heal Within, and every month, on first Wednesday of each month, I have a workshop. And this first coming Wednesday of October, which is October 7th, from 5.30 until 7.30, this month's theme is self-confidence for teenagers. So weight loss and nutrition is fantastic. And yet we want to motivate our teenagers and to know that they can accept and appreciate who they are and make the change within themselves. So if they would like to, please, our phone number to make the reservation is 818-551-1501, and they can go to www.healwithin.com, and then sign up for the workshop. And in this, this month, again, it's teens and self-esteem. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. This is the invitation for the... And our last speaker will be um, Elizabeth Sadlin from Girls on the Run with an update. Good evening. Hi. Good to see you all. Um, and I think your invited guests this evening were just the perfect um, beginning for this to, to hear about the importance for young girls and young women and women to be able to have healthy eating habits 
exercise, and then the theme of bullying, and to think about how our program um, really addresses each of those issues and helps young girls be able to think about um, building those habits early so that we don't have to break them later on. I um, just wanted to bring you a, a fall season update, brought you a little packet of information. As you know, we had a successful spring season at our one Verdugo Woodlands site. Um, we also launched and tested a summer camp for the first time, and we did it at uh, Verdugo Park. And we had, it's a one-week camp. The girls came for the five days, half day each day, had a great time. And so we're looking to be able to expand that experience for girls across the county in the coming summers. Um, our fall season starts next Monday, and actually um, our really happy to be expanding to a total of three sites in Glendale for this fall season. We're, we have Virgigo Woodlands returning for our third season, and R.D. White and Lincoln are also um, coming aboard. So we have three elementary schools offering Girls on the Run. Um, our registration forms, I included a hard copy in your packet. They're also available at our website at www.gotrlosangeles.org. And we will be welcoming girls on a space available basis through um, the second week of the program. So that's up to October 2nd. Um, registrations we're collecting tonight and today and tomorrow and then setting the number of teams and assigning our coaches and then we'll take up to 15 girls per team. Um, most of our sites end up having a couple of teams because of the popularity. Um, we know already, for those of you who might be interested in being running buddies for the one-on-one -on -one buddies for the girls who run their culminating 5K, that'll be on December 13th at University Universal City, and we'd love to welcome you to do that. Um, and then as we're planning already for spring of 2010 and our continued expansion and the goal that you set for us of being able to offer the program in every elementary and middle school in Glendale, and we would love to um, invite any of anyone you know and anyone in the community who's interested in being able to continue that expansion, we'll have a community meeting on November 7th where we invite people to come and talk about their interest and, and build those partnerships. We have an application process, and we really work as partners to be able to make that happen. It takes a little planning, um, but we've got some really great experience to build on here in Glendale. Um, so we look forward to working with you on that. You see that um, when we started talking with you last year about our expansion plan, um, it's taking off like gangbusters. You see the... Um, the chart of our number of teams and number of sites. I also brought for your information um, the next couple of pages in the packet are the curriculum topics. So you know that it's a 12 week program twice a week so there are 24 sessions in a season. We offer the season in the spring and the fall and this gives you an idea. It's also available on our website the topics that are covered. Um, you know Girls on the Run is for three to five grades three to five. Same topics but of course at an age appropriate level for grades six to eight in Girls on on track. So you can see how these topics of taking good care of yourself, being a good friend, and being a good community member come through. And, and whether it's healthy eating, taking good care of our bodies, making good choices, good communication, um, bullying, gossiping, these topics are interwoven in the games and activities that the girls do with their trained coaches and hopefully build up those, those strong habits um, to keep them healthy through their lives. And the registration form is available there. Um, any questions I can answer for you? I, well, I, I'll start. I have sure. a question about the, um, first of all, the community meeting mm -hmm. on November 7th. Who do you invite and where is it? I'm not sure we've set our site because we're, we might, we usually, um, thanks to you, have most of our meetings at the Pacific Community Center. Um, and so we haven't necessarily set the site for November 7th, but we invite anyone in the community. We really encourage those folks who've been in touch with us who are saying we might want to start a site to come, often finding that there are other people from their communities also interested we can put them together. It's an open meeting. It's a chance to be able to see some videos, talk to coaches, meet the board members, hear what it's like, what happens in uh, a site, and be able to think together about how to make it happen. Um, we, uh, If you go to our website, gotrlosangeles.org, click on um, get the newsletter. We don't bombard, 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 bombard you, but we will let you know the site specifically. Okay. And you do invite all the, the school um, 
um, administrators, or how, how do you reach oh, out to the schools? It's through the through people who have contacted us. But that's a great idea. I mean, we've got contacts through the PTA, through you, through um, superintendent's office, and we can um, reinforce not just through that distribution chain, but other ways to be able to let folks know about that community meeting. We can do that together. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to. Uh, I would really like to see you reach out to uh, South Glendale Absolutely. because they're really crying for um, programs for for the youth in that community. Right. And uh, and may I suggest to you to uh, contact um, uh, Officer Sue Shine. Um, she runs the Star Program for our Glendale Police Department, and I think oh. she might be a really good resource for right. you um, to um, recruit um, people that are interested. Great. Thanks for that suggestion. Any other commissioners have comments or questions for uh, uh, Commissioner Manasarian? Do you have a? Well, I think it looks like a great <laughs> curriculum. I wish my daughters, who are now 21 and 24, could have done this. Yeah. And the fun thing is, a lot of times the coaches first they say, oh, "I wish this was around when I was a girl," and then the coaches who go through it say, "I have gotten as much out of this as the girls have." You can see, as a as a woman, we face these issues on a daily basis, and the whole question of being in the girl box and the pressures of society and those expectations that we have um, to be a certain way. Uh, these are these are great lessons for all of us, no matter what our age. Good reminders. And we're still looking and welcoming um, volunteer coaches. And so uh, we have just done our last training. But we usually, just before the season starts, we are able to squeeze in an adi additional training. So anyone interested in being a volunteer coach should also be in touch with us through the site. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. And good luck with the program. Thank you. Next item, please. At four consent items, we have approval of minutes of the regular commission meeting held on August 10th, 2009. Are there any uh, corrections to the minutes? Do I have a motion to uh, accept the minutes as presented? I so move. I second. second. And uh, do we have a consensus? Yes. 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 Okay. Next item, please. At five business agenda A action items. One is commission on the status of women's master calendar of events 2009. At A, there's a motion providing direction regarding the commission on the status of women's master calendar of events. Any corrections or additions? I just had a comment about um, the uh, Jewels of Glendale for next year. Uh, I know that we don't have a date yet. Um, I was hoping that the commission could would consider a Friday because it seems that Thursday a lot of our elected officials here are unable to remain for the entire luncheon because of other obligations. Um, we there uh, we have thought about that and I was thinking about that this year. But the problem that we have is uh, <coughs> we have a great uh, support system here at the city. And um, uh, a lot of times Friday does not work for those uh, um, staff people, and so we definitely want them there. And so we try to keep the uh, the luncheon on Thursdays for that for that reason. Um, any other comments? It's a good idea. It, it is a good idea, and I, I wish we could. That would yeah. be a, a nice uh, Actually, change. Actually, often Fridays is that? Oh, I yes. see. Yes, yeah, they see. rotate, okay. and, uh, yeah. oh. and they don't like to. It's you know, it's not fair to ask them to come. Well, to, oh, sure. Any other? Um, I noticed, uh, Miss Baboumi, in, in October that uh, the Unity Fest is the 11th and not the 12th. Yes. Okay. Just a little typo. And I wanted to mention, uh, and uh, Ramella Markarian kind of stole my thunder, but I'm going to mention it anyway, and that's the uh, Senator Carol Liu's uh, Women's Health Conference. Again, that is on October 30th. It is open to the public uh, from 7 in the morning. Or, well, actually, the workshops start at 8.30. Anyone can go and take part in the workshops. And the workshops go from 8.30 a.m. until 11.15 a.m. Uh, I'm going to be a moderator for one of them, and... Uh, I kind of took offense at first, but then they said it was not meant personally, but I'm going to be monitoring how to lose those last 10 to 20 stubborn pounds and double your energy all naturally. <laughs> okay, that one is at 1030, and uh, the speaker is uh, Rose Cole, and she's... Um, written a book, co-authored co a book called Audacious Aging. I think I'm going to have to pick that one up. Uh, with Andrew Wheel and Deepak Chopra. 
uh, and uh, so she's a, um, a, a nutritionist and a, uh, a health guru. She's beautiful. I have her picture. But uh, if anybody is interested in going to, and uh, as the uh, the gals mentioned, uh, there are like 16 to 20 workshops that you can uh, register for. They are all free. All you have to do is go to www.cl, for Carol Lou, women health.org and you will view all of the workshops and descriptions and I know uh, Lori Free, uh, Lieberman is working on this as well and uh, sign up for some of the workshops. The luncheon unfortunately is invite only um, but the workshops are all free and anyone can come in and we invite uh, they're expecting like a thousand women to come to these workshops so please take advantage all of you that have nothing to do on that October 30th from 8.30 in the morning until 11 15, and uh, uh, I- I'm th- thrilled that we're all involved in that. Um, so that uh, that's my comment on the calendar. Anything else? Anybody else want to take a... Okay. So we'll, we, uh, we're going to adopt this calendar as presented. Okay, we don't need a, a motion, so okay. <clears throat> all right, next item, please. At 2, there is a consideration and discussion of the 31 Days of Domestic Violence Awareness (coughs) Month activities. At A, there is a motion providing direction regarding the the 31 Days of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, also known as DVAM, activities. Okay, can you give us a a report, Uh, Ms. Baboumian? You've done such a beautiful job on this. I I have to compliment you on that. So why don't you give us a brief report and then we'll move on. Okay, thank you, Chair Devine, members of the Commission. For the o- upcoming October 2009 DVAM activities, staff has been working on developing a calendar of events for a full month-long campaign for the following purposes. To raise awareness of the Commission's DVAM activities and ways of preventing violence, to raise awareness of other community and local DVAM activities, to invite the public to events and activities related to the goals and core mission of the Commission, and to offer tips and suggestions on simple everyday actions anyone can take to help raise awareness as well as prevent and eliminate violence from within the city of Glendale. The events scheduled for the 31 days of DVAM will place special emphasis on the power to heal, create, celebrate, and empower other women and the community at large. Um, let's see, the fiscal, fiscal impact of these, just a brief. Sure. Um, with your permission, Chair Devine, would you like to just take it one yes. at yes. a time, and then I can do the fiscal impact Oh, okay, each. of each one? That'll be perfect. Okay, so the first one is the, the first, Cut It Out. Yes. The first DVAM event is the Cut It Out program um, that we would like to implement at the City of Glendale. Cut It Out is a program of Salons Against domestic abuse fund and it's an organization dedicated to mobilizing salon professionals to fight the epidemic of domestic abuse in communities around the United States. The program builds awareness of domestic abuse through materials which are displayed in women's salons. By providing salons throughout Glendale with a display poster and a resource guide cards, these materials will be available to women who are looking for help. Many salons utilize the privacy of the women's restroom to display these resource guides so that the women who may not speak up um, still have access to the crucial information. And in addition, participating salons will receive an informational sheet that explains domestic abuse, its signs, and what salon, salon professionals can do if they suspect that a client is being abused. Uh, Staff is seeking direction on the method of distribution of these cut-it-out materials. The Commission can mail or hand-deliver the materials to salons throughout the city of Glendale. Uh, At this point, we've identified approximately 200 salons in Glendale. Um, Hand-delivering the materials, uh, commissioners and staff can explain the importance of having this information there. It might be more effective. We can also mail them To mail it to 100 salons would cost $190 in postage. Um, I would like to point out at this time that the cost of mailing out the materials can be absorbed administratively, so the Commission does not have to absorb this expense. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. um, Thank you. This... um, the idea, as you can see of, with this program, and I've given everyone, all the commissioners, a, uh, a sample of the Cut It Out brochure, and uh, these would go in the restrooms at the salons. Um, as you know, a lot of women uh, talk 
when they and they disclose a lot of thing, a lot of intimate uh, uh, secrets uh, of their life to their um, uh, what their salon operators and. If these are in the restrooms, they can easily go in there and put them in their pockets and not, uh, and no one will know that. So um, I think uh, that if we can mail them like that, and I, with a nice letter, an introductory letter explaining the program, explaining what we'd, the commission would like for them to do with the materials, all of the materials are free from L'Oreal, correct? This is all from L'Oreal? Yes. Yes. And uh, so we can just, if, if anyone even, if a salon calls and says, we need more, we've run out, uh, they can order them free, or we can order them free for them. Just it's a matter of getting on the Internet, probably, yes. and uh, just ordering what they need. So this is one program that we are suggesting. Do I have any comments from commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Pillsbury. Um, just <coughs> a couple things. I agree with Christine that it would be better to do this in person. I don't know if, you know, if there are 200 salons in Glendale, that would be a lot to do. Um, in the letter, there, you know, possibly there could be if you have any questions, if you'd like to talk to somebody about with more details or more help so it doesn't just arrive. The other point, I think the restroom is a great idea because it's private, but I think the material should also be out on display somewhere because, you know, not everybody goes into the restroom. Well, there is, well, there is a poster that, they're, that they will receive that goes, uh, is supposed to be displayed on their mirror. Yeah. And, they, and, uh, um, and if, of course, if they wanted to, and Chris, uh, Ms. Baboumian can put in the letter, that they can put these cards anywhere they like. I mean, we're, we're not going to say that they must go in, yeah. the, in the restroom. Mm -hmm. if, the, if some of these salon operators want to have them at their stations, we have no objection to counters. that. Pardon? Or the counters. Any, yeah. Yes, the counters. I had a question. Ms. Uh, Ms. Commissioner Manasarian. Last year, do we know exactly how many salons participated, or have they? In the, do we have a count of how many salons they have participated in the past? Um, to my knowledge, I don't have that information, but I can provide you with that information. I was just curious if we had a good participation last year. Um, yeah. Commissioner Walker. And Ms. Baboumian, I also wanted to know, you said that salons can order extra copies. Do we know in the past if there were salons who ordered extra copies of the cut it out? To mine, no. I don't. I don't think we okay. we know that information. I don't think there were very many salons in the past that uh, cooperated or were involved in this because the last time we went uh, with this program, uh, it it included. A, a workshop that the salon operators had to attend in order to communicate with the abused women or suspected and um, I think that deterred a lot of them from from uh, getting involved in this program so <coughs> I, I suggested that we simplify it and just get this information out there without any any more responsibility um, on the salon operators this way they have the information they can do with it what they want we're not asking them to be counselors or psychologists or uh, victim advocates all we're asking them to do is put the information out there. Does it only Shall have to be salon owners that can request the information? Well, it, it is called the Cut It Out program, Salons Against Domestic Violence. We were even thinking that if we could get them these, even these cards put in the restrooms at the Americana, I mean, even though it says cut it out on it, that yeah. that would be even a good thing. Yeah. I, you agree with that? that? Uh, I think that anyone that would like like them. <clears throat> Because there's um, a number of other, um, I would say, establishments that may people come in that would be sure. interested, even their own employees. Mm -hmm. I would, if if there's just a way that people can order them, mm -hmm. have well, them sent to them. I think we should consider. Right. Well, there is there is. Uh, I don't know if there's an email address on here, but uh, the, as far as the commission is concerned, for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we do want to try to get these into the salons, and uh, the information out there, and that that's one of our goals. So, um, 
That is the first program. Okay, so if you want to, should we um, take a vote on each one or? Um, I'd like to just kind of vote on all of them at the end. Madam Chair, that's certainly the prerogative of the uh, commission. Okay. Um, so, ladies, let's, shall we go through the, the um, all of four of them, and then at the end the motion will be all of them, one of them, two of them. Is that okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. I thought okay. there were 31 of them. No, there are only four. <laughs> there are only four, but they last for 31 ongoing. days. Ongoing. So ongoing. Thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Baboumian, please, the next one. Uh, the second DVAM event is Unity Fest, which is co-sponsored by the City of Glendale, and it's a celebration of diverse cultures, people, food, arts and crafts, and entertainment. Unity Fest will be held on Sunday, October 11th, 2009, from noon to 6 p.m. on Brand Boulevard between Lexington Drive and California Avenue. It is a free event for the community that draws hundreds of people to celebrate the city's diversity, and the commission can participate in Unity Fest by setting up a booth at which information on domestic violence can be distributed to those who attend the event. A table, chairs, and canopy can be rented from the city at a cost of $75, which includes the rental and setting up and taking down of the booth. Um, that's the second event. Okay. Now, uh, questions, uh, Commissioner Walker? I just want to comment on the discrepancy on the dates because I'm plugging it in my um, calendar here. On our calendar, it says that it's October 12th. And then in the report, it's October 11. That's the correction I made when we did the calendar. Oh, okay. so, yes, it's already so it's been done. It is Sunday, it's October 11. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's what, 12 or 11? 11. 11. 11. 11. Okay. It's the 11th. Sunday, the 11th. Um, uh, this is a good way for us to get our, our information out there and um, uh, uh, on domestic violence awareness and all of the other programs that the Commission does. Um, we have one problem, and that problem is that Commissioner Manasarian, uh, Vice Chair Manasarian, and myself cannot participate in this. So the burden of the, what is it, six hours uh, would be on our fellow commissioners. And so um, in order to to, um, releg to pass this particular event or activity, we would need um, a cooperation from the other commissioners to man this table for the day, or woman this staff. table, staff this table, right, <laughs> for, th for those hours. So um, do I have comments from the commissioners on this one? I will be traveling that week. <clears throat> I'm actually out that day, too. So that would leave my first day. So <laughs> oh. I'll be out of town just for And that Commissioner day. Walker, would you like to go and sit there for six hours? <laughs> All by uh, yourself. Uh, <laughs> I'll volunteer the youth. Yes, oh, right. One over so there. So, Miss Baboumian, it looks like we have a staffing problem here. So, is there any Walker? way where we can maybe partner with another organization and then just maybe have some of our things? Um, <coughs> present, present there, and I'd be happy to maybe um, man or staff the booth, like at the beginning, and, and so on. Uh, Ms. Baboumian, what I think uh, we did it before. We, we have done that with yeah. the ARS. We've partnered with the mm -hmm. ARS uh, twice, I think. That's something we can most certainly look into. I'll speak to the staff person who is coordinating Unity Fest, and work with her to find an organization such as ARS um, who is willing to share the table and have our information. And okay. I so, yeah. so then on the Unity Fest, uh, Commissioner Pillsbury. Well, since domestic violence is our theme for wanting to be at the table, perhaps the YWCA, since they have the domestic violence programs in Glendale, that would be an appropriate place to share and maybe we would pay the $75 to have the table and they would provide the staffing and, as well as as Commissioner Walker who could come for part of the time but not need to be responsible for the whole six hours that's an excellent suggestion so we can you can check if they're going to be there and the ARS we can ask and um, as well as path achieve right I mean, and path achieved. I think as we well. have quite a few we mm -hmm. can choose that, from. But yes. I think it's a great, great idea. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. What about our um, Rosie goes to camp kids? Can they participate? Um, I suppose they could. 
we, we could certainly any? contact them. I think that'll be good mm -hmm. to kind of like integrate them and what, show yeah. to the community that they're, you know, kind of some of the outputs mm -hmm. or, um, you know. Well, when we could, that we've developed. And we could also use that table to uh, distribute uh, applications for ex officios. And my next question was, what's the availability of Commissioner Malakian and Commissioner Maricott that day? I'm going to a concert. <laughs> okay. Um, to be honest, I'm not too sure. No. Okay. But I okay. might be able to come for an hour or two yeah. before. Uh -huh. okay. And I was already planning on going, like, for an mm -hmm. hour. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, even for half an hour, yeah. just I think would be very, really nice, really good. Okay. So we can do that. We'll, uh, so when we make the motion, the motion will be that we partner, uh, try to find a partner for Unity Fest table and, uh, and go from there. Sounds good. Okay, and then the um, next next program. Uh, the third DVAM activity is a two-hour self-defense training session at Path Achieve Glendale. At the June 2009 regular meeting, the commission had approved two two-hour self-defense training sessions to be administered by Shield Self-Defense Training for Path Achieve Glendale. Uh, Path Achieve, as you remember, is a transitional housing facility in Glendale for homeless individuals and families. The Commission had approved the two sessions at a cost of $250 each on the condition that at least 15 women and girls who are residents of the transitional housing facility participate in the training session. The second session will be held on Thursday, October 15th at Path Achieve Glendale as part of the 31 days of DVAM activities. And in addition, staff has contacted the Door of Hope in Glendale, which is a tra transitional housing facility for women and children who have been victims of domestic violence. And they will be participating in the training session at Path Achieve as well on the same day. Which is excellent, and I want to congratulate, thank you, uh, Ms. Baboumian, for, for doing that, taking that step to uh, get in touch with the Door of Hope or vice versa, but that's a, a very good. Now, the first session we had do a donation that covered, we had a sponsor that came in. So this one, uh, we do not have a sponsor, correct? So this will come out of our budget, the $250 for this. So um, that is a um, uh, question. Ms. Wa Commissioner um, Walker, is sorry. Is this open only for the um, participants of that program, or is it open to the public? Uh, pa just it's, This is Path Achieve, it's the homeless, homeless. and the, the Door of Hope, the vic yeah. uh, whoever is uh, the domestic violence uh, victims. victims who are housed there at the time, which is really good, I think, really good. So we should have more, more women involved this time than the last. Any other questions or comments? And in the past, how many people attended? Um, the previous one, I believe. The recent past, yeah. Yes. yes um, the the previous one. path session, I believe, had 11 or 12 residents. There was other staff that participated, but they didn't meet the minimum requirement of the 15 residents that we had asked for. But and and you, this time, but, they, but because we have we had a sponsor. Yes, yes, because if you remember, we said mm -hmm. that was one of our requirements was that they have 15 attending, otherwise we wouldn't do it. But uh, they had 11 or 12 plus staff, so they went ahead, uh, Nelson went ahead. And this time we should, there should be no problem reaching that 15 if we have the Door of Hope and, uh, and the Path Achieve residents. Um, so, uh, so that is that program. So if you keep that one in mind. And the last, the fourth and oh. final. The final DVAM event is Glendale YWCA's annual candlelight vigil, which is scheduled to take place on Friday, October 16, from 5 to 7 p.m. in the ballroom of the YWCA. And as Ms. Burton explained, the candlelight vigil is held in memory of victims of domestic violence, both the survivors and those who have lost their lives. Speakers at the vigil will include victims, representatives from Glendale Police Department, and the chair of the Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, the vigil also provides an opportunity for education and outreach to the community. Right, and and as I mentioned before, this is a um, an event that we've been we've been partnering with the YW for for 
at least five years. So it's a, it's a, mm -hmm. trip. and there is no fiscal impact. If you look at the um, fiscal impact on the on uh, page two of this report, uh, Ms. Baboumian has it uh, uh, pretty well stated. Uh, One hundred ninety dollars for the Cut It Out program, two hundred fifty for the Path Achieve Self Defense, and seventy five dollars to rent the table. There is no fiscal impact for the YW. Okay, so. Uh, um, <laughs> Ms. Farpedian. Thank you. I'm having a, a, a blank. Okay, Ms. Farpedian. Madam, Madam Chair, in, in reviewing the various items, it may be a good idea for you to have separate motions on each of them, in particular because on the second item, uh, Unity Fest, you really do need to um, make some effort in finding the co-sponsor. So um, maybe authorizing the chair to have the ability to um, speak with others, and if you're unable to find a co-sponsor, then you may choose not to move forward with securing a table. So okay. you may want to handle that one differently. And as to the third one, this was an item that was already approved right. by the commission in June, so you don't need to vote on that a second time. So you can skip that and, and um, maybe consider just the first and the second, I'm sorry, the first and the last collectively, and then a separate motion for the second one. Okay. Okay. All right. Did we all understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So let's start with the first, the cut it out, and the candlelight vigil. So we need a motion to um, um, go ahead with those two events. I just so have, I have a motion, motion. On, on that one. Michelle so Lino? did we agree that others can ask for the other organizations, or maybe nail salons could ask for the the uh, the handouts? Absolutely. This is this is a free program, so they anyone can. Uh, but I know this didn't say that, so I just want yes, to make sure we we're, yes, we're in agreement yes, to that. Yes. Sure. Okay. Sure. So if you want to uh, get that word out, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, so do I have a motion for the cut it out campaign and the candlelight vigil, or for one or the other? I'll move. That we accept those two. I second. Participate. And we have a second. Do I have uh, unanimous? Yes. Yes. Great. Okay. And uh, let's take the uh, City of Glendale Unity Fest, and this one has to be made with um, certain now. specifications. So do I have a motion? Uh, should I recite the motion? Um, I think what, what, the, what the decision was that you move forward in finding a co-sponsor. Co-sponsor, correct. Um, and that you want the chair to be authorized with the ability to um, come to a final decision as to who the co-sponsor shall be. Right. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I move. Second? Second. We have consensus. Okay, so then we'll be uh, we'll be doing all four of the, the programs. Very nice. Very good. Thank you, commissioners. Next item, please. At three, there is a consideration and approval of co-sponsorship of Verdugo Hill Hospital's physician lecture series titled Men's and Women's Preventative Care and Osteoporosis. At A, there is a motion providing direction regarding co-sponsorship of Verdugo Hill Hospital's physician lecture series Men's and Women's Preventative Care and Osteoporosis. Okay, any comments, questions, uh, commissioners on this one? Uh, this one we were uh, uh, invited to... Uh, to participate with and to partner with, there is no, um, well, there is a small uh, fiscal impact, very small, but it will, it's something that uh, we'll be able to use. Is that this one that we're asking for the, the 250? There's the next no one? fiscal None? impact here. They're just asking for two um, gift baskets for a free giveaway similar to the okay. Glendale Adventist. And they don't want the bags and the... Uh, no, they did oh. not ask for bags. Wow, okay, How great. Are we going to put the item? Where are we going to put the item? We're, no, we're, don we're, we're donating baskets, uh, you know, the, oh. uh, the baskets we're also that we have. also giving some that, of our... That's makeup. on the next one, the next one. This one, they, they have not requested that. Okay. Okay, and this is on osteoporosis. The good thing about this particular uh, event is the fact that it's in the evening. We've already done one on osteoporosis with Glendale um, Memorial. That one was a luncheon. This is a two-hour uh, seminar in the evening, uh, and it is uh, the doctor's oster camps. Uh, he is a, um, an orthopedic surgeon. She is a uh, OBGYN, I believe. And uh, they're, they're terrific doctors. And this is the um, one of the national, it's the national, the commission, uh, the national commission's um, health focus. 
Um, so I, I think it's real important. They've already sent out their uh, flyers with our names on it, and uh, it looks really good. So uh, no fiscal impact. Uh, it's a great uh, event. Um, Ms. Baboumian. Um, st uh, the commission can have an informational table set up to distribute any information that you would like to distribute at the event. And I believe, we, I believe that the chair, you will be speaking at the event as uh, well. Yes, uh, th all that is another um, a great thing about these uh, seminars that we're doing with these hospitals. Not only are they asking us to be in attendance, but they are giving us uh, the exposure and the ability to speak. Uh, if any of you uh, would like to go and and uh, and speak uh, on our behalf, you're you're absolutely invited. It doesn't always have to be have to be me. Um, I think uh, I, I would welcome any of the commissioners to be there and to, to speak on our behalf. Um, so I, I, I want the public to know that if you're interested in this this work, this seminar, I keep calling it a seminar, it is Tuesday, October 6th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Verdugo Hills Hospital. Um, are there any more questions uh, for from the commissioners before we um, have a motion on this one? I think it's uh, uh, this is a, a no-brainer. I mean, we've had such great, great results uh, from Verdugo, from Glendale Memorial. We have one coming up Thursday. We've already got over a hundred people. Oh, wonderful! It's fabulous. So um, this one should be just as good. So do I have a motion to? Uh, I move that we do this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we take that part we that we partner with uh, Verdugo Hills. I'll second it. Okay, do I have unanimous? Yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. Next item, please. At four, there's a consideration and approval of co-sponsorship of Glendale Memorial's Breast Cancer and Melanoma Seminars. At A, there's a motion providing direction regarding co-sponsorship of Glendale Memorial's Breast Cancer and Melanoma Seminars. Okay, um, very similar to the, the last one. This is a, a very busy, you can see, October, November, September uh, for, the, for the commission, but these are all very good programs. October is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We have uh, Commissioner Sobey to thank for the melanoma uh, workshop because when we were there for osteoporosis, she suggested that she would like to have a, uh, a uh, seminar on uh, melanoma, and here it is. Right? So um, this one does have fiscal impact. Yes, they asked us to provide gift bags as well as the items that would go into the gift bags. We don't have gift bags on hand. We do have tissue paper. Gift bags uh, would cost, 250 gift bags would cost approximately $125. And the items we have on hand, so we don't need to purchase any of those promotional commission items at this time. And the gift bags we'll have on hand to use um, for other events that we might have in the future. So that's a, uh, uh, a worthwhile expenditure. So the, the, uh, let, let's repeat those dates for those uh, watching. Tuesday, October 13th is the Beating Breast Cancer Seminar. And uh, two very prominent oncologists from, uh, from the hospital uh, that would be Glendale Memorial, uh, Dr. Bogosian and Dr. Ukar. Uh, they're going to discuss, they will discuss breast cancer and how it can be beaten. Um, and that, that'll be a great, uh, great seminar. Date once more. The date is October 13th, and the time is at noon, I believe. Reservations are 818-502-2378. Um, we can take both of these motions together, can we not? Yes, okay. And the melanoma, this is the, uh, this one will be on, help me. November 17th. Thank you. November 17th. Also a Tuesday. Yes, November 17th, Tuesday, and also at noon, a luncheon. And remember, the luncheons are free. This is Everything is free. free. Mm -hmm. The information is priceless, but uh, everything is free. So that's Tuesday, November 17th. And um, do I have a motion that we should um, I have a I question. Uh, partner with these hospitals and these programs? Question? Um, for the second one, the melanoma, 
We were being asked to provide gift bags, right? Yes. Okay. I just have a question. The last um, Jewels of Glendale um, event that we had, mm -hmm. we had extra gift bags. Yes, true. We used those at Verdugo, oh, at uh, Glendale Memorial when we had 70 people for the osteoporosis. Yes. But we so. still have the tissues. Correct. Yeah, that we yes. can. Okay. Right. Yes. Um, Sparpetian. Um, I think you're also uh, looking specifically for the authorization to expend the funds. So if you're looking to support the event, your, your motion looking should also include... Yeah. Okay, so I need a motion to support the event and to um, allot the $125 for the gift bags. Do I have I a motion? Move. have a second? second? Do I have consensus? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Next item. Um, is commission and staff comments. Okay, shall we start with um, Commissioner Lamel tonight? Commission comments? Uh, yes, I'd just like to uh, reiterate um, the offer to teen girls to attend uh, Lisa's Healing Center uh, inner site at 208 Louise, right across from the main library. Uh, it would be a great uh, opportunity for young women to talk about uh, their issues and in, in the uh, comfort of her uh, surroundings. I've been to that, uh, her, her healing center. It's it's quite, um, a, it has a very serene feeling, and I think it would really be helpful. So she said she said the first Wednesday of October, and uh, certainly I think it's a, an opportunity to be able to help our, our young teens with uh, many issues that maybe they can't talk to their families about. Uh, other than that, I'd like to just thank the speakers that were here. It was quite um, informative, and I look forward to the uh, the various events that we have partnered with. Uh, at least the, um, especially at the at the hospitals, I think that's going to be really really a good uh, good time to to meet some new people and also learn some things that we can share with others. Commissioner Manasarian, thank you, uh, Chair Devine. I'd like to invite the audience to guess who's coming to dinner, the event that's going to be benefiting Glendale Healthy Kids in Glendale. It's going to be a really fun event. It's going to be on September 19th and 20th at different venues, and I think we still have slots left, so if you're interested, please call 818-548-7931. We'd love to have you participate and have a great night with uh, dinner and a lot of socializing and a lot of fun. Um, the second event I'd like to invite the audience to be a part of is going to be the uh, stroke event at Glendale Adventist Hospital, which is going to be this Thursday. And uh, Dr. Lansley is going to talk about surviving stroke. And I'm going to be sharing some of my story with the audience. And Chair Devine is also going to be talking about the commission. So I'd like to invite everyone to attend. It's a great event. And the number to reserve is 818-409-8100. And lunch will be served, but it's free, but we need to know how many people are going to attend. I think so far we have over 130 people yes. signed up, so. Mm -hmm. so uh, the, the cutoff is going to be 170. Right. So, so. Thank you. Mr. Pillsbury. Uh, yes, two things. This past Saturday night, I participated in the Path Achieve Glendale event. This was the first annual fundraiser for this worthy cause that the Commission has been supporting uh, to help homeless folks throughout our community. And there are many more opportunities for those of you out there who would like to volunteer or help. There's the guest chef program there. Um, tutors come to help the kids with their schoolwork. So it's, it's an organization that we can all get involved with. The second thing is, I noticed during the oral comment the sheer number of upcoming events in our community that we and you are all invited to. And I thought that was really exciting that there, we have such a vibrant community and so many events to go to, and I strongly encourage everyone to get involved. Commissioner Sobey. I know there's another wonderful event tomorrow at Massage Envy where you can book an hour massage for only $35. $10 of that money will go to the Susan Komen Foundation. Um, 
for women's health issues. So that's going on. You would just have to find the number through information. Also, start reading Lisa C's Shanghai Girls. You'll really love it. Mr. Walker? Um, I just, first of all, want to thank our brave firemen who really sacrificed their life and all the wonderful effort in terms of um, helping with the fire situation in Glendale and the surrounding environs and um, our family living near that border of La Crescenta, La Cañada, Montrose, Glendale area. It was a little nerve-wracking, but, you know, we really appreciated the tremendous, tremendous effort, and we really thank our wonderful um, and efficient. We do really have a wonderful and efficient um, fire, uh, uh, fire department in our community. And the second one is... Um, Okay, talking about fashion, October is also Fashion Week, and I know that's why Nordstrom is having that fashion show, that private event, and I'd like to invite everybody, everyone to this event. It's called Fashion Revealed. Pass out some of those. Okay, and this is a fusion of art, music, and fashion at the Viviana in downtown L.A., and Help for Our Children Foundation is a fiscal agent. Commissioner Lamel and I are board members of that. And this is a really worthwhile event because it's um, showcasing the wonderful talent that we have in the arts field um, in, um, in the city of L.A. And again, the benefits, the proceeds will benefit some of the programs that Hope Foundation also does in the city of Glendale. And for you aspiring models out there, we're doing casting calls, ladies, for models, <laughs> for wonderful gowns. The gowns are like really, you know, um, awesome. So um, give us a call. Probably they can contact uh, Ms. Baboumian and just refer them to me. Okay. And um, also, um, October 27 is the Women's Conference by uh, First Lady of California, Shriver. And um, it will feature remarks by Carolyn Kennedy and Alicia Keys. So hopefully um, we'll have you there. It's always a wonderful program. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Commissioner Malakian. I'm really looking forward to starting Shanghai Girls. I love Good. reading, and I think that it's Good. it's a really interesting book, and I'm possibly going to go to some of the meetings that they're going to have. Um, I'm also really looking forward to uh, the community meeting for Girls on the Run. I think that would be a great program to start in the high schools, too, because a lot of girls love running in high school, but they're not on track, and just to find a way to mentor younger girls. So I'm looking forward to that. Great. Okay. Mr. America. Um, I second what Talara said, especially about the Shanghai girls. Um, that seems really interesting. And um, also, when we were, um, when both of us heard about the Heal Within Healing Center about the first Wednesday, we were we both agreed that it would be really cool to attend. And um, let's see. Um, last month, um, I went to. Um, a seminar by Karen West and she's the author of The Trouble with the Alphabet and um, I also saw um, Chair Devine there so that was cool and um, it, it was just it was just such a beautiful portrayal of um, that promoted a lot of civil rights activism and it was just so um, unique how it fused artistic and realism and put them both together and it was just so beautiful and I'm actually thinking of doing a story on it and um, I intern at the Pasadena Weekly and I'm thinking of submitting a story about it hmm. and um, yeah, I'm just thinking of promoting it. I thought it was really cool and I think a lot of the community needs to hear about it so that was cool. Thank you. Staff, any comments? Um, I'd like to uh, just spend a couple of minutes talking to you about the NACW live stream conference. Right. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you got the opportunity to watch it because you could only watch it live, and, and that was that. It was on Thursday, August 20th. The conference focused on strategies for thriving women's commissions, and it was led by Rachel Scott, and she is a division administrator for the Iowa Commission on the Status of Women. And that is actually a division of the Iowa Department of Human Rights. And she shared uh, the experiences of her commission. 
and she emphasized the importance of strategic plan for systemic change and to move away from direct service. Um, she encouraged commissions to work with agencies that already have programs in place and to support the work of those agencies. She also talked about widening um, the commission's sphere of influence to partner with people and agencies that can help the commission achieve its goals and she used the words engaging the unusual suspects, um, people who don't have the commission on their radar and to start engaging those agencies in working with the commission. She mentioned the importance of a focused strategic plan, which this commission has already been implementing for a while. And anyone who's interested in learning more about the Iowa Commission on the Status of Women can visit their website at www.women.iowa.gov. And I'd like to also remind everyone about the PAVE fundraiser event, which is on the evening of Thursday, September 17th at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Um, there is a pre-sale ticket price of $135. Tickets at the door would be $150. And uh, my third and final um, staff comment would be that the student ex officio search is currently open. Um, People can go online to download applications and get more information, and that is at www.ci.glendale.ca.us forward slash women. They can also contact me at 818-548-4844. Ms. Baboom, yes. yes. Regarding, <coughs> regarding the student ex officio, is there a flyer so we can forward it? Yes, I will get that to you. And you Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, first, I want to thank Ms. Baboumian for taking that uh, conference uh, call or the Internet, uh, the National Commission. That was uh, very interesting. And, and uh, when we shared uh, the information, uh, we had a, a bit of a, a proud moment because our commission is doing basically what they are telling us to do. We are partnering. Uh, the the uh, main comment was not to reinvent the wheel, not to start programs, but to partner with people and organizations in your community. And uh, that's what this commission is trying to do. So um, that, that was a, uh, a worthwhile uh, lesson. I want to congratulate again the Glendale Police Department for their Verizon Hope Line Award. They have been consistent supporters in uh, domestic violence awareness events and it, uh, uh, what they got from Verizon was $2,500, and uh, Sergeant Feely informs me that he is um, updating their domestic violence um, brochures that they give to victims uh, with the money. They also received phones, Verizon wireless phone, uh, and uh, he says they're, give, they're using those uh, uh, a lot, and they're very appreciative. So um, it was a very, very uh, worthy award. So I, I congratulate them for that. And I want to uh, reiterate what uh, Commissioner Pillsbury says. We have so many events coming up in this community, uh, and I, I hope to see a lot of you at, at some of them. Uh, seminars on health and preventative med uh, medicine, osteoporosis, um, Please come to the events. The, the price is right. The information is, is going to be amazing. And um, if you need information on any of the dates that we mentioned tonight, the breast cancer awareness, the melanoma, the osteoporosis, and all of the others, please feel free to call 818-548-4844. Ask for Ms. Baboumian, and she will give you any information that you want. And uh, with that, uh, thank you for being here tonight. And do I have a motion for adjournment? I so move. A second. This meeting is adjourned at 810.